Hey Wargamers, it's Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and I'm back to finish the Britannian Highlander from Tor Gaming's Relics. In the first video, I just went over base coating this model and the different colors I used for that. At this point, the wash is now entirely dry, and I'm going to begin detailing the model. I'm going to start by using Imperial Blue to start lightening up his kilt and hat. With this color, I'm leaving the original Imperial Blue and the wash kind of showing in the crevices and the deepest areas, and really just working towards the edges. I'm going to repeat that same process using ultramarine blue and getting the whole thing just a little bit lighter again. The hat's a little tricky because it is such a large flat surface, but when I come back in with the plaid texture, that's going to help kind of cover up any little blemishes or uneven spots that there might be at this point. Now I'm going to start adding the grid lines for the tartan using Wolf Grey. Wolf Grey just has a very slight blue tint to it, which is why it's going to work really well here. I start by tracing parallel vertical lines on his kilt, leaving them a little bit soft at the top edge where they kind of fade into the shadow. I'm spacing them fairly evenly, but they don't have to be perfect because as much as there's not a lot of detail to this clothing, there would normally be some overlap and some wave to a kilt and so they don't have to look perfectly spaced. With the vertical lines done, I'm going to start on some horizontals now. Because this kilt is so short, there's only room for two or maybe three of them. The key with the horizontal line here is that it is broken up by other details in the model, but I need it to look relatively contiguous once I actually get it on. Now I'm going to repeat the grid process on his hat, just starting from the middle and drawing a single line outward, and then making a series of parallel lines to that. I'm not worried right now that the lines don't wrap all the way around the hat, I'll look at the model from different angles later once I've got this top part set up and make sure that they're complete then. One of the key points here is that my wolf grate is a little bit on the thin side, especially because I'm using a wet palette, but also just because of the nature of Vallejo paint. It's not perfectly opaque, and that's kind of what we want here, because I want some of the blue to show through. I don't want stark white lines, because they'd be too unnatural looking and too distracting. Now looking at the model from the front, I'm going to make sure those lines wrap around the brim of the hat. And with the first set of lines complete, it's time to repeat the whole process, creating the perpendicular lines. A grid style tartan like this is a great way to add some detail very quickly to a model, and really kind of give it some character without having to do a whole lot of really intricate freehanding. There's not a lot you need to learn to make this look good, especially from a distance on a tabletop. Because it's on clothing as well, the lines don't have to be perfectly parallel because there should be some natural folds and give to the fabric. So if you don't have a really steady hand or you just really haven't done a lot of freehanding before, this kind of tartan can be a really great first project. You can see right there that the paint went on a little bit too thick in this one line in particular. There's just a little bit too heavy on the brush and there's one very white spot as a result. I'm going to have to come back and fix that later. Now I'm going back to the original dark blue, which was Vallejo Imperial Blue. I'm going to basically draw a secondary grid within the first one, as if there's some darker lines kind of interposed between the very light lines. Mostly I'm doing that because I want the tartan to look a little more detailed, a little more interesting. True tartans are actually very complex and have a lot of different overlapping lines with a lot of meaning to them. And I kind of want to at least try and respect that tradition, even though I'm not creating a real tartan here. I'm not taking, 
you know, there's no real uh, motive behind this one. It's just something to make the model look interesting. But I do want it to look at least somewhat believable. And this does help sort of create some extra dimension to the tartan itself. There's one or two spots again where the dark blue is almost a little too heavy handed, kind of like the white mistake earlier, or the wolf gray mistake earlier. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of wolf gray and actually go back in every second line here and just really accent it again so they look like they're overlapping a little bit more. The idea here is to give it a little bit of like an appearance of maybe weaving back and forth between the different colors. With the tartans out of the way, it's time to actually start working on the canvas or potato sack or whatever you want to call the skin-like component of this puppet guy. He sort of looks to me like he's made out of potato sacks, and that's kind of the color I'm going for. I'm using Vallejo Khaki, which is just a lighter shade of the Vallejo Earth base coat I already used. You notice that as I paint it, I'm also making sure to pick out the individual stitches on his uh, different body parts. There's a fair jump in uh, brightness between the Vallejo Earth and the Vallejo Khaki. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing fairly large block highlights, and I'm gonna kind of work in an interim shade later to smooth the two together. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of wolf gray and coal black together to get a highlight color for his shirt. Here again I start by doing a very sharp block highlight, and I come back later with an interim color to smooth it out a little bit. Right now though it's got a very steep transition and it doesn't look great. Next up, I'm grabbing a little bit of bloody red to highlight his sash and pom-pom. On the palm, this is going to cover pretty much the entire top side, whereas on his sash, I'm going to be using it to highlight the very specific folds of the sash itself. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Beastie Brown and highlight the wooden aspects, which are basically all the buttons. You can almost instantly see a very significant improvement on the two buttons on his chest. They were just kind of lost in the background before and they're much more visible now.
because the button where his belt buckle would be is a fairly large detail, I'm going to give it a little bit of a wood grain pattern. I'm going to do that by using the colors I already have on the palette, which is the uh, Vallejo Khaki and Earth. I'm basically using alternating diagonal lines where they alternate sort of darker and lighter to just give the appearance of some wood grain without really having to go into the detail of really painting an intentional wood grain pattern. A little bit more of the wolf gray is going to be used here to highlight the cufflinks and the brim of the hat, as well as the tiny little bit of the top of the kilt. Basically, everything was painted with the stonewall gray earlier. I'm also going to use this color to pick out a few of the stitches, especially on his eyes and the ones that kind of simulate teeth because I really want them to be much more visible. They were kind of being lost against the buttons and all the adjacent tan aspects, because they're really the same color as the sack cloth as well. And so just by using a little bit of a different color here, I make them look a little more important and make them kind of look like the facial details they're meant to emulate. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo khaki mixed with just a touch of Vallejo Stonewall Gray and just do a little bit of highlighting around the edges of the different sack areas here. Now I'm going to start highlighting the red cloth and the palm on top of his hat. I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo elf skin tone and mix it with the red already on the palette to get a tone somewhere between the two. I'm going to start by using this as basically a pretty simple, linear, kind of top-down highlight on the sash itself. There's some pretty defined folds in the fabric that really grab these well. The palm on top of the hat is relatively smooth. You can see there's a little bit of defined texture, but it's not a lot of uh, sharp edges to really grab the paint. So I'm basically going to paint some light dots and imply my own texture here. Now I want to really lighten up his goatee and hair. I'm going to use some Vallejo Gold Yellow. This color ends up being just a little bit too translucent though, not quite powerful enough for what I want. So I actually pick up a little bit of the elf skin tone that's already on the palette and work with that as well. Here I'm using the Gold Yellow and you can see it's giving me a nice transition but it's taking a long time to build the color up. And that's not really what I'm going for with this model. So here's where I start using the elf skin tone. You can see it's a much more drastic jump in brightness. However, it doesn't quite have the sort of blondish red tint that I really want for this character's hair. So what I'm doing is I'm using the elf skin tone as basically a lighter base coat. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit of a mid-tone orange to make a blend between the two different extremes of the base coat here. Going from the almost brownish tint of the current base coat to the near white color of the elf skin tone. And to get that transition between the two different extremes is going to be a little bit of Leo Orange Fire. You can see almost right away that this orange fire is almost a perfect blend between the two shades I've been working with. It covers up the elf skin tone really nicely and gives it a very bright, vibrant orange. And then it blends very nicely back to the more subtle brown base coat. The hair's almost done now, and you can see we've got a very vibrant kind of ginger color happening, which is exactly what I wanted from this. Here I'm just going back to the Radiant Platinum that was already on my palette, and just touching up the metals a little bit, where the wash kind of dulled the color.
I'm continuing the process of brightening the metals with the shield. It's paying special attention to the edges of the shield here, the sort of round edges of each of the sort of overlaying plates and the rivets themselves. I'm also applying the Radium Platinum a little bit thinly to the surfaces of the shield just to help brighten it up a little bit because it did become quite tarnished looking with the wash and it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. Final here, I'm just making sure that the shield looks nice and shiny from the front, where the metal just kind of wraps around the edge of the shield. This is basically the last detail in this model, and at this point, it's ready for some basing, and then this Highlander is ready for war. I'd like to thank Tor Gaming personally for generously providing these models to the Tabletop Media Co-op. This video wouldn't be possible without them. Thanks again for watching, and as always, do something epic.